Welcome to another Living Life. Let's begin today with a simple question. Can you think about a moment in your life, just looking back on it, uh, when you were sure that God was present in your life? When you were sure that God was leading you, protecting you? Uh, perhaps in that very moment you were unsure, but now looking back, a time when God was actually faithful. I want you to kind of think about that and to be able to hold on to that memory today. I imagine for many of you, there are scores and scores of these moments, uh, but also so some of you, I'm sure, are unable to even think of one moment. I pray for those of you who are unable to think of anything that God will show you today of those moments. You know, what we continue to see in our meditation as we look into these passages is that our God is faithful, that our God will always be faithful, even in times of danger, even in times of famine, that our God is faithful. And as long as we trust in his plans, we will be able to experience not only his presence, but also his faithfulness. So I Today, I pray for every single one of us as we go into this passage, uh, whether you are able to look back and remember all of these different moments or perhaps not able to remember any, let's be able to open our hearts and be able to experience His faithfulness in His Word here today. So with that heart, let's read today's passage. Second Kings 8, 1-6 Now Elijah had said to the woman whose son he had restored to life, Go away with your family and stay for a while wherever you can, because the Lord has decreed a famine in the land that will last seven years. The woman proceeded to do as the man of God said. She and her family went away and stayed in the land of the Philistines seven years. At the end of the seven years, she came back from the land of the Philistines and went to appeal to the king for her house and land. The king was talking to Jehazi, the servant of the man of God, and had said, Tell me about all the great things Elijah has done. Just as Gehazi was telling the king how Elijah had restored the dead to life, the woman whose son Elijah had brought back to life came to appeal to the king for her house and land. Gehazi said, This is the woman, my lord the king, and this is her son whom Elijah restored to life. The king asked the woman about it and she told him. Then he assigned an official to her case and said to him, Give back everything that belonged to her, including all the income from her land from the day she left the country until now. What we know about uh, Elisha is, uh, through our reading of 2 Kings, that Elisha was a very powerful prophet. He's actually known for his miracles. He was a successor to even, you know, a very famous prophet, Elijah. Uh, but what we are told is that he had a double portion of Elijah's spirit and actually performed twice the miracles as well. But I pray that today that our eyes are not focused only on Elijah, but instead let's be able to open our hearts and to be able to see the God behind Elijah, the one that is truly working through his prophet. You know, we might not have an Elijah in our lives in this very moment, but we also have a God who is working in our lives, who is working for our good and for his glory right now. Doesn't need a prophet around us to be able to see that. We can experience that ourselves. That's what we see in today's passage. You know, today's story is actually a continuation of a story from before. Uh, a couple of chapters ago, we're told that Elijah had restored the son, revived the son of a Shunammite woman. And we're told her, right, he told her of a forthcoming famine that will be there for seven years. And because of that, after the son is revived, uh, she ends up living, uh, leaving her land and living in the land of the Philistines for these seven years of famine. Now think about this. You know, because of this one word that Elijah has given to her, she's willing to leave behind everything. Everything that she knows, everything that she has to go to this foreign land. You know, it sounds easy on paper perhaps, but this requires an immense level of faith. Elijah told this woman, hey, there's a famine, go. And she listened. And if you look back in the Genesis chapters, right, uh, the most important, one of the most important figures is Abraham. We are called the father of faith. Well, God tells Abraham, right, in his youth to go and leave behind his land and his people. And that's what Abraham does, right? But what we 
are told this for a very long time. He actually doesn't. He doesn't really listen right away. Uh, he eventually listens. He doesn't leave right away, but later on he leaves. And yet, just because he left many years later, we still commend him for his faith because that's an immense faith in itself. Uh, but this woman, she left right away. And I'm sure for these seven years, she faced a lot of uncertainty. She had to sacrifice a lot of things that she did in her life, right? But that's what obedience often looks like. Obedience takes sacrifice. Obedience is not easy. To be able to obey means to trust in God's guidance, not in ours, but only in God's guidance. You know, recently we went on a short-term missions trip, right? I took a team of our members here, and we went to this uh, area that is no Christians, 99% non-Christians living in that land. And what we did is we hit the streets. We went out and we preached the gospel. Uh, we weren't forceful. We let the Spirit guide us. We prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we said, God, send us the people who you want us to share with. And amazing things happened. You know, we didn't know where we were going. We didn't know who we were going to be meeting. We didn't know if we are going to be rejected or not. And yet God opened not only our hearts, but the hearts of the people that we met. Eventually, some of these people came and met us, attended the church that we are part of there, and ended up getting baptized as well. We were able to experience this amazing blessing, not because we were special, but because we trusted in God's power and God's providence. And we trusted in His timing. That's what obedience looks like, to be able to trust, even if everything ahead of us, in front of us, is kind of complicated and confusing. You know, trust leads us to be able to see God in different ways, and in different parts of our lives. Trust allows us to be able to see God in His perfect timing and to be able to receive His unforeseen blessings and protections. We're told that after seven years, this woman, uh, finally, after the famine, she returns from the land of the Philistines, but she finds her land occupied and her property taken, which makes sense, right? She's been gone for seven years, but still, she trusts in God. She trusts in the God of restoration. She trusts in the God of justice. And once again, in his perfect timing, he hears us and responds to our cries. You know, we're told that this king, he was having this uh, conversation, right, about the servant Elisha. Uh, but as they're having this conversation, who but appears but a living, walking testimony of Elisha's greatness, this Shunammite woman, right? And, and we're told that Gehazi explains that this is the woman, this is the, uh, the woman and the son whom Elijah restored to life. What amazing timing. They're talking about Elisha, and out of nowhere, this woman appears. And with that, everything is restored. She's restored. You know, there's so many different moving parts in the story, right? Elijah, seven years ago, blessing this family. And then we have this king seven years later talking about Elijah and all of these things, right? And it sounds like coincidence, but with God, there is no coincidence. There's only His perfect timing. Our faithful God working, right, in His perfect way. There is no bad, you know, timing with He's never early, He's never late. God is always perfectly on time. It's on us to be able to trust in Him so that we could experience all of that. So today, let's not trust in anything else. Let's let go of trusting other people even. Let go of trusting our own abilities. Definitely not trust what's going on in this world. Instead, let's be able to place our trust solely on Him, on His Word and nothing else in this world and be able to experience His never-changing love and grace for us. Once again, our God is never late. He's never early, but He's always perfectly on time. It's one of the most difficult lessons that we need to learn, but we don't really want it, right? You know, when we want something, we want it right now, right? How do we want it? We want it in the way that I want it. Well, oftentimes, that's very different from what God has in store for us. So instead, let's be able to let go of our own pride, let go of our own plans, and instead be able to look upon Him. I look back on my life today, right, as I asked you guys to do. Uh, but not only remembering the many blessings, right, but even some of the down periods in my life, times when things were not going well, times when I felt really alone and hurting. And in those times, I didn't understand why I had to go through these things. But now looking back with the lens of God's grace, I know that even in those moments, especially in those moments, God was there 
leading me, consoling me, grieving with me at times, but also leading me to be the person that he wanted me to be. And I needed to experience all of that for that. To be able to experience even greater blessings in my life, I needed to go through all of those things. But once again, I was never alone. You are never alone today as well. God is always with you. And as long as we are able to trust in him, trust in his word, we'll be able to see God work in our lives like never before. Let's trust not in our timing, but trust in only his. So with that, let us all pray. Lord, we pray that today that we are able to declare and confess through this passage that we will place our trust only in you, Lord. Lord, there are many times when we have placed our trust in other things, or perhaps uh, we say that we trust in you, but we didn't really act in that way. Today we pray, Lord Father God, that we will be able to change all of that, to let go of our pride, let go of looking elsewhere, instead only trust in you. We pray, Lord Father God, in your perfect time, restore us. In your perfect way, answer our prayers. We pray, Lord Father God, for all our brothers and sisters today. But we thank you and we love you. And we place our trust in you. We pray all this in Jesus' name.